Beaton, strict and particular Baptists, including the Beaton Crisis. Note from the publisher. This story was first published under the title Converted on LSD Trip on the 11th of February 2001. This book contains far more. It speaks of the life of Davy Clark, who was converted to Christianity after a bad experience on LSD on the 16th of January 1970. Davy tells how he turned his back on a life of crime and a sinful way of life to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He tells of his former criminal past in order to demonstrate the grace of God in saving sinners. Like Augustine and William Huntington, he does not hide his past. After his conversion, he learned to read through reading the Bible in order to educate himself as he was virtually illiterate. He found help through reading Dr. John Gill's Body of Doctrinal and Practical Divinity, The Bondage of the Will by Martin Luther, and John Bunyan's works and certain strict Baptist ministers. We include a recommended reading list under further publications listed at the end of this book. Once he was convinced of the truth of the doctrines of grace, he joined the Beat and Strict and Particular Baptist Church in 1976. He was called by the Lord and sent by the church to preach the gospel in 1982. This edition tells of the serious doctrinal errors and religious practice that he found amongst the religious and of his defense of particular redemption. This led to his secession for the Beaton Church in 1984. It is hoped that this testimony of David will be of great help to those who can identify with the troubles he mentions in the section of this book, The Beaton Crisis, which was first published as a private document in 1984. The first and second forwards are written by non-Christians. First forward by Malcolm Kirkham. I first met David Clark around 1965 in Aylesbury, a town just north of London. David went to the local secondary modern Grange School and I went to the grammar school. Our worlds collided though when through mutual acquaintance I joined the R&B band he played for, the Fowler Mean. I joined as a singer. We became firm friends. The other band members were very straight and po-faced but David and I connected. I was aware of his older brother Mike however he was notorious in Aylesbury and no one messed with him. He was also an entrepreneur and extremely intelligent. On a different path, Mick could have succeeded in any field. Dave and I had many adventures during our times together. He was naturally inclined to steal, however, and his brazen nature astounded me. If he saw something he wanted, he just took it. This is something he shared with his brother. Dave and I drifted apart when he was incarcerated along with his brother in one place and I in another for a separate crime. After 50 odd years, we are now in touch again. This book gives details of the life and times of a criminal and his redemption and his present day mission. It is also a snapshot of a period of time and place. End of Malcolm Kirkham, 6th of May, 2017. Second forward by Dr. Philip Fleming. Converted on LSD trip. This book, The Personal Testimony of David Clark, is in an autobiographical style. It charts his life, which became one of criminality and drug taking through an experience in 1970 of finding God whilst under the influence of LSD. Cynics may say that this was just an effect of the drugs, but it is clear that the experience changed his life. Later, when in court facing charges, he admitted to many other crimes and was fortunate in receiving three years conditional discharge and not a prison sentence. Since then, David has combined his work as a lecturer in electronics with his mission of spreading the word of God. This is a scrupulously honest book recording both the difficulties that he faced as well as the successes in his life since 1970. A continuing worry is the fact that his brother, currently serving a long prison sentence in a Philippine jail, who himself has recently found God. This is an inspiring story of a life that's been turned from crime to a positive account and may be of help to others who find themselves directionless and involved in crime and drugs misuse. Dr. Philip Fleming, MA, BA, BCH, FRCP Psych, DMP, consultant psychiatrist with special responsibility for drug and alcohol misuse. At Portsmouth Healthcare Trust. Third forward, by Reverend Greg Haslan, Senior Minister, Westminster Chapel, London. 
J.B. Clark tells the story of his troubled, violent past and his extraordinary life in such a way that it retells the story of Jesus' love that's available for us. Christ has the power to renew and reclaim anyone's wasted years, no matter what we've done or how deep our shame. He can relaunch our lives on a brand new future that we could never have planned for ourselves. Fourth forward by Samuel Notaimando, chaplain at HMS Prison, Nottingham. This moving story demonstrates the goodness and mercy of God and it is clear proof that no one is beyond God's grace, mercy and love. Whatever wrongdoings we may do, God continues to call back to himself and if we accept, he fulfills his plan for us to give us hope for the future. Note from David, the author. Please excuse the typos and errors in grammar and spelling. I was virtually literate until the age of 21, after which I learned to read to educate myself. Please take time to understand what I'm trying to communicate, as to get proofreaders to work for love is very difficult. I'm sure the New Testament writers, some of which were unlearned men, had the same difficulties. Yours sincerely, David Clark.